this is the start of something beautiful. I haven't built a computer in four and a half years. I'm a bit nervous because I'm going to be pretty rusty and really worried about every little step of the way. Like, is this how I'm supposed to do this? Is How much do I tighten this thing down? I don't want to break it, etc, etc. But I'm also so freaking excited. So this box arrived this morning at about 10 o'clock. I want to capture the very first opening of the very first box. I thought, wow, did they really fit everything I ordered in this one box? No, they didn't. I checked the tracking online. This is actually just the case and the monitor, which of course is the two biggest components, but the rest should be coming later today. The camera works going to be a little bit crappy for right now because I actually, one of the things I ordered is a stand for the phone. I'm filming this on my cell phone and that is coming in a separate package later today. So I just have to hold it with my hands for now. All right, let me show you my set. So I don't have much room in this apartment. The only thing I could really build this computer on is this desk right here. Because other than that, it's like, okay, well, I'm not building it on my bed. Uh, I'm not building it on the ground on carpet. There's my current computer. So yeah, <laughs> it's gotta be here. Of course, this wasn't just completely clean like this. Um, I had to move my mixer and my microwave. Also, the lighting here is pretty terrible, so I set up a couple LED lights that I have. I got this one, and I got that one. So it should give me, I mean, not exactly professional studio lighting, but it's something. At least you should be able to actually see stuff. All right, let's open it. Little known fact, Santoku knives are not just for cutting vegetables and stuff in the kitchen, but they're also great for opening boxes. There it is, my almost 24, 23.8 inch, 1440p monitor. Oh, this one's also mercury free, which is really nice. My current monitors, they just poured out a bunch of mercury all over my lap when I first set them up. It's a little bit concerning, so that should be nice. And there is the case. Look at how big this box is. Before I mess with these things too much, because there's really not much I can do with them without the rest of the parts, I think I want to prep my computer, which is probably going to take a while. I want to prep my current computer by just taking an inventory of all the files that are on it and see if there's anything that I need to transfer off of it, because I'm going to be doing a fresh install of Windows onto a brand new hard drive. So this thing is going to get nuked, and eventually the SSD in here will go into my laptop. Now I don't actually have the external drive to transfer the files on here to just yet, that's going to come later today, so it's just basically taking inventory and maybe moving everything into a single directory, so as soon as the hard drive does come, I could just copy all that onto the external drive, and then I'm good to go. And I also want to prep for the new computer, so I'm going to need to install Windows. OS is going to be the first thing I do once I boot it up, so I'm going to make a Windows 10 installation uh, image, disk, whatever. It's not going to actually be a disk. It's going to be a flash drive. I'm not sure how large a bootable Windows images, but this is a 32 gig flash drive that's pretty dang fast, so that should be enough, I think. Oh, this should do it. Looks like there's a uh, tool from Microsoft to create an installation media for Windows 10. Let's go ahead and reformat what's on there right now. There's actually boot media for Ubuntu on the flash drive right now. Wrong OS. I think I've got everything ready to back up. Most of my stuff is in Google Drive. Um, there's some stuff I'm going to back up from my video production related things like thumbnails and stuff like that. Although that is on my Google Drive as well, I figure I might as well just transfer it to the hard drive instead of downloading it. It'll probably be a lot faster. And the most important thing probably is these backed up profiles or saves. Steam has a thing where there's like a, a save game backup in the cloud thing where if the developers have it enabled and, and set up, Steam will automatically just sync your save games, which is quite nice. But surprisingly, not that many games actually have it. Um, to the ones that I've got right now installed. Kentucky Route Zero, that one didn't have it, which didn't surprise me because it's a pretty small indie game. What did surprise me though is I've got Wolfenstein The New Order. That's a huge AAA game, and even that didn't have cloud saves. So just made sure I backed up all that stuff. All right, rest of the packages have come in. So in the interest of making my filming as good as possible, I want to find the one that has the stand for the camera. I know it's not that one. That one is some ties and the processor. So it's one of these three. Let's 
Let's see if it's in box number one. It's got a whole bunch of air pillows. Um, hmm. Part of it is here. A small part of it. But we got the motherboard here. What is this? Oh, that's the 520mm PWM fans. Wow. They're pretty compact. Five of them fit in there. Alright, uh, yeah, so this comes in a separate package. This is... I have no idea if it's actually going to be useful. It's a selfie ring light. It actually came completely free with the stand that I'm going to have for this camera. Basically, you, like, clip it onto the phone, and it's, well, a ring of LEDs. Just like it shows in the picture here. Which actually might be super useful. Especially if I'm going up close. Like, looking in, like, very close up to a part, or especially inside of the case where a lot of the avenues of light are going to be blocked off, and it'll be pretty dark. This could actually be super useful. We'll see. It does have a rechargeable battery, so uh, I can't imagine it's going to last very long. It's meant for selfies, not for hours of filming, so we'll see how that goes. Box number two. All right, it seems like it's in box number three, but let's go ahead and take this one out see everything that's inside of it. So, main thing is the video card. 1070 Ti, ultra quiet. Oh, I've got high hopes for this thing. I think it's going to be actually quiet, unlike every, literally every other video card I've ever owned in my life. Oh! <laughs> Here's the SSD. Something just feels like sort of wrong about this, because it's so expensive. This is $200, and it's so small. And once I actually take it out of this box, it's going to be even smaller. It's so small, but this is a terabyte. It's a whole ass terabyte. And what do we have here? Oh, this is the this is the CPU cooler, isn't it? Yeah, the Noctua CPU cooler. It's a special edition for the AMD AM4 socket. Because for some reason, most coolers that you look at, they come with all sorts of mounting brackets for all sorts of different types of sockets, except for AM4. You gotta buy a special edition to get that. I know there's a couple of different varieties of Noctua coolers that aren't special edition and don't out of the box come with an AM4 bracketing system. However, you actually can get them for free. You just like send them the receipt on their website and they'll ship one to you for free, which is nice, but I didn't want to wait like an extra week or two just to be able to put my cooler on. So I'd rather just get a special edition that just comes with uh, the bracket right away. All right, this one has to be it. We have the memory, the external hard drive, Whew, this thing's heavy, and this must be the stand, it is. So we've got the stand here and then a bunch of doodads. Uh, I'm going to look at the instructions and see how to put this thing together. Okay, I think I get it. So these three things are completely unnecessary for what I'm using. It says it's for like a sports camera or something and or a digital camera. Yeah, so for a phone, I just need this thing. It's the phone holder connected to this base plate that's been tightened on it. And the base plate just slides into here. Clicks down and I think that's pretty much it. Um, it holds the phone securely with a spring. Pretty strong spring, actually. So you put it in there, grips it, it's got pads on the back and uh, no pads on the top or bottom, just plastic teeth, but should be fine. It's got a ball joint on top, so you can rotate the phone around. Um, it's got pretty short feet, it's not obviously not a full-size tripod, but perfectly fine for putting it on tables and things like that. And it's got actually bendy feet, so you can bend the feet whichever way you want, and it's got like grippy rubber ends to it, so it should grip pretty well. You could possibly wrap the... Uh, noodly appendages of this thing around like, I don't know, you could probably wrap it around like the top of a box or really pretty much anything to get kind of weird angles if you wanted to. I don't know if I'll use that though. Alright, I'm finally recording from a tripod. I can finally use both of my hands and I can get a completely still shot. And uh, yeah, it's like a million times better. Okay, so let's take a look at this selfie ring light that came for free with this thing. Um, I hope it's pre-charged. See if it's useful at all. So here's the light. It's actually a lot thicker than I thought. I thought it'd be pretty thin, but no, it's pretty big. Comes a little, a little instruction thingy in there, and a very short USB cord to charge it. Again, this thing comes with a proprietary rechargeable battery, so it doesn't use double A's or anything like that. It's got something inside of it. I have no idea what the capacity is or how long it should last. Probably small and not very long. So this is the attachment mechanism. It's got a little, little like rubbery kind of pad in here. And this goes on the phone, release the clamp so that it stays on. 
So basically the camera will be sort of in the center of this ring light. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to come pre-charged. It's got one button and then this little spot here is to open to charge with the USB cable and it doesn't seem to turn on. I should probably read the instructions though. Maybe there's something I'm missing. I don't think I'm missing anything. It looks like it does just need to be charged, unfortunately, but do you see the battery is 250 milliamp hours? And apparently, it says continuous light in full power greater than 45 minutes. It's kind of impressive. Got the light charging. Not sure how long it's going to take, but I'll try it in a bit. For now, first thing I want to do is get all the files off of my computer so that I can take it apart and not have to worry about it. So let's open up this external hard drive. Oh, look at this. It's got a fancy little, uh, is iridescent the right word? A little bit of like tape here. It kind of reminds me of um, those old Windows CDs. Does anybody remember when you used to actually have a Windows CD and install it from a CD? It always had something that looked just like this on the very top of the CD. Like the whole top was just covered in this sort of material. It's like really shiny and weird. I forgot how heavy mechanical hard drives are. They're big. They're a big chunk of metal and all sorts of other materials. All right, so here's the thing. It's got textured plastic all around for the shell housing the actual hard drive inside. Yeah, it's all plastic, but it feels reasonably sturdy. This is the front. Nothing on the front. I don't know if it has activity LEDs for when it's processing. I don't think it does. Doesn't seem like it. I've got the USB connection on the back, and uh, I don't believe it gets enough power to run the hard drive through USB, which is what this is for. I believe it has power. It also seems to have vent holes on the bottom and the back. Let me see if you can see inside with the flashlight thing turned on. Yeah, so you can sort of see inside. That thing you see there in the center is the actual physical hard drive. There's the top of it, the little metal plate on top right there. It's good that it has vents, because, I mean, you wouldn't want to put something that generates heat in a complete plastic box that has absolutely no air holes at all. That would just become a hot box. And uh, hard drives don't really make that much heat. They, they don't really use that much power. One thing I do find a little bit funny, though, is that um, having the exhaust on the bottom, the openings, on the bottom and the back seems like pretty much the worst places to be. Wouldn't you want to put it on top? This thing is lifted off of the ground by, I don't know, a centimeter? If you can see these tiny, tiny little rubber feet here. So it's going to have that far off of the ground for air to come underneath and get into these vents. I don't think it's actually going to matter because, again, they don't really generate that much heat, which is kind of funny. I suppose you could, of course, put it upside down and that would cool better, but then you wouldn't have any rubbery feet touching the surface, which, depending on what it's on, might uh, make some annoying vibration kind of noises because it is a physical spinning hard drive after all, and they can get a little bit noisy sometimes. All right, let's plug this thing in and start to transfer files. I really am curious if it has an LED, some sort of a light. Oh, it does. Yeah, it's on the back top. I saw that, but it didn't look like it would actually allow light through, but apparently it does. Cool. I can, I can feel the hard drive spinning. I was wondering if the hard drive would include some stuff already on it, and it looks like it does start here, Windows Warranty.pdf, this hidden folder with the serial number and an XML file. Um, yeah, I'm just going to reformat that. And format complete, took like 10 seconds. There, doesn't have a special icon anymore, it's called Bulk, and it has absolutely nothing on it. <sighs> Alright, let's go ahead and transfer everything from this computer onto it. Yeah, it looks like it's stabilizing around 50 to 60 megabytes per second, which is about what I expected. I looked up reviews for it. Definitely not very fast, it's a mechanical hard drive. I think it's about 5,000 something RPM, so it's not even one of the faster types of mechanical hard drives, but perfectly acceptable. Turns out there was another maybe 300 gigabytes or so of files that I totally forgot that I needed to transfer, so this is going to take a while. Quite possibly up to maybe like an hour or something, but that's totally fine. I, there's plenty of other things I can do to prep the computer. I think this thing might actually be broken. It's been charging for 20 to 30 minutes now, and it actually has a little LED that comes on in here to show that it's charging, so it definitely was charging. And it still won't turn on. Also, I noticed something about the cord. At first I thought, oh, it's a cute little cord. It's really tiny. It's surprisingly soft, too. And then I realized, look at this. Yeah, it's missing a chunk out of it. 
I don't think that has anything to do with it not working because the light is coming on, so it's it recognizes that it's charging, but still, it doesn't speak well for the quality. And I mean, they were giving this away for free, so A, I can't complain too much, and B, it's probably not very good if they're giving it away for free. Let's go ahead and open up the final package. Should have the CPU in it and some cable ties. Just want to make sure that I actually have them, even though I don't need them right now. Let's see what we got here. Uh, this would be the CPU. Hello. Of course, the actual CPU, as you can see, is totally tiny. Most of the box is taken up by the stock cooler that it comes with. I think it's called the Wraith Spire. And got the cable ties. Yeah, my cable situation over here, if you can see. There, look at that grainy footage. It's not too good. It's not routed or, like, tied together in literally any way. They're all just kind of there. It's like a rat's nest. So I'm going to fix that with these cable ties. Alright, I think that's most of the setup, so I think I will build the computer, or at least some of it, in the next installment. Let's just look at everything we have. So we have a million boxes and packing stuff. We got the monitor, we have the case, CPU, motherboard, the SSD. I forgot what this is. Ah, right, the, uh, the fans. We have the memory, cable ties, video card, uh, the Noctua CPU cooler, and this is just the stand. It has nothing to do with the computer, really. Oh, right, and of course the hard drive that I'm transferring to right now. I hope you've enjoyed part one, and I will see you on part two.